Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. In today's tutorial we will be set up a complete parametric excavation pit where we can control the length, width, depth and also the slope of the pit. We go ahead and open up a fresh metric generic model floor based family template. We will be using the floor base today because we want the family to connect to a surface and always be vertical. First things first, as I teach in my introduction to family creation, we set up the reference planes that will work as the framework for our geometry. These reference planes will constrain and hold the geometry in place. The blend geometry that I will be using today will contain two profiles, a small one which will be the excavation pit bottom area and a larger one which is determined by the depth and slope of the pit. So we create the reference planes for both of these. We continue to add the dimension line and we check off the EQ sign making the reference planes equal distance from the center line. So when changing the width, the expansion will be similar in both directions around the center line. When that is all done, we move on to the parameters. And the first set of parameters will be usually defined depth, length, width and slope placed in the dimension category. And remember that slope needs to have the type set to angle type. Also, add the parameters that will be at the mercy of the user defined parameters with formulas. We place these parameters in the other group since these parameters will not be touched by the end user when the family is loaded into the main Revit project. These parameters will help us calculate the slope of our excavation pit. We'll come back to that later. So the length T stands for length top and it's the length for our top profile in the soon to come blend geometry. Same with width T which stands for width top. Again, it will be calculated values based on the user defined slope and height. We proceed to um, connect the parameters just created with the dimension lines. So when changing the values on the parameters, the reference planes will adjust. The brain controls the muscles. Make sure to get every dimension line, easy to forget one or more. We connect the depth. The depth will be the depth of the pit from the top surface of the topo solid and the height will help us remove all the topo solid when the excavation pit is sloped and the terrain is steep. So time for the geometry. We'll be using the blend function. The blend tool blends two profiles together. For example, if you have a, if you sketch a large rectangle and a smaller rectangle on top of it, Revit blends the two shapes together, just like we are doing here. We will be constraining the two profiles to the reference planes in the sketch mode, which I usually don't uh, recommend, but in, the, in this case I will do it. Personally, when drawing up the geometry, I prefer to position these elements adjacent to the reference planes, rather than directly on top of them. This approach offers, I think, better control when aligning and constraining the geometry to the reference planes. You can easily see which line in the geometry are constrained to a reference planes. To double check, you can also click the geometry inside the sketch mode and see if every line has a closed lock on it. We just changed our geometry from solid to void because we want to cut the top of solid and create a pit. We constrain the depth and height and open up the family type dialog box to do some quick flexing by changing the parameter values to see if the geometry acts as intended. I'll just change the width and length, T, T, yes, and perfect. Let's do a quick cleanup and then open up the family type dialog box once again. The formula for the height is depth multiplied by X. X is just a user defined number. The height will help us remove excessive topo solid if the terrain is steep. It will become clear when the family is done. And now we have arrived at a really fun part of this tutorial, doing some trigonometry and formulas with tangents and angles. So what do we have? We have a triangle marked in red. We have a user defined slope angle marked in green. And we have the calculated height marked in turquoise. So, with the two values, the green number, the slope angle, and the turquoise number, 
the height we can with trigonometry calculate the x distance marked in purple. This distance is the distance from the end of the bottom rectangle profile to the end of the top rectangle profile, creating the excavation pit with a slope. The formula I use, which you will see on screen, is height divided by tan, the slope angle. It is important that the angle parameter must have the data type set to angle when creating the parameter. So the total width of the top profile with t marked in orange is x distance multiplied by 2 plus the width of the bot profile. We are creating a formula for width t and the same for length t. Just copying the width t formula and change the one small part of the formula. So all the right. We are all done with our formulas and parameters. The last thing to do is to change the family category from generic models to the site. The only function this will have is to place this family under the site category in the project browser in the main Revit family. I also check the box is always vertical since when placing it out it is what I want that this family will always be vertical. Also crucial to check the box cut with voids when loaded, since this family will cut out an excavation pit in the top of solid. We then save the family with a logical name and load it into the main Revit project where the top of solid is waiting to be cut. Ok, we are inside the Revit main project. We just place out three of the excavation pit family on the top of solid. We then use the cut tool to make the actual pit. As you can see you can also rotate the family, making it fit just as you want. So let's select one of the families and start flexing the model by changing the parametric values. Seems to be working just fine. And here as you can see the X number comes in handy. when cutting a steep terrain top of solid. We just change the x value to a higher number and we see the cut x is expanding. And that concludes this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe for more extremely fun videos.